In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the transformation shear. Now with a shear, the image formed has the same area as the object. And also, the direction of shear is parallel to the invariant line. So when describing a shear, it's important for you to start, number one, the invariant line, and number two, the shear factor. So if you consider these two triangles, that's triangle ABC and triangle DEF, we can say triangle ABC undergoes a shear transformation being mapped onto triangle DEF. In this case, to find the invariant line, we simply have to extend corresponding sides, like AB corresponds to DE. So extending AB and DE gives us this point here where the two extended lines meet. Also, BC and EF are corresponding sides. So BC and EF extended give us this point of intersection. So if we join these two points, what we're going to get is the invariant line. So like we said, the direction of shear will always be parallel to the invariant line, as you can see here. Now, how can we find the shear factor? With the shear factor, we use the formula shear factor equals distance between a point and its image divided by the perpendicular distance of the point and image from the invariant line. For example, we can say in this case, the scale factor K is equal to the length BE, that's the distance between a point and its image, and is divided by the perpendicular distance from the invariant line, which I can call H. So K is equal to BE over H. Let's talk about a shear transformation parallel to the x-axis with shear factor k. So we can consider a unit square or ABC, which is being mapped onto the shape or A dash, B dash, C dash. And that's by a shear parallel to the x-axis, meaning the x-axis is the invariant line with a shear factor of k. So the point 1, 0, which is this point here, is being mapped onto itself. And this is because it is lying on the invariant line itself. Remember we said points on the invariant line remain unchanged under the transformation. And again, we can consider the point 0, 1 and how it has been mapped onto the point C dash. We should have coordinates K1. So 0, 1 is being mapped onto K1. So if we can combine these two matrices, then we'll come out with this matrix here as the matrix representing a shear parallel to the x-axis with shear factor K. We can also talk about a shear parallel to the y-axis with shear factor K. So in this case, the y-axis is the invariant line. The unit square or ABC is mapped onto the shape or A dash, B dash, C dash by a shear parallel to the Y axis with shear factor K. The point 1, 0 is mapped onto the point 1, K, this point here. And the point 0, 1 is being mapped onto itself, so it remains unchanged since it is on the invariant line. So we can come out with the matrix representing a shear parallel to the y-axis with shear factor k as this matrix here. So that's basically how we handle shear transformations.